Hey everybody, John Malaki, United Patients Group, and just did another cooking show, uh, back by popular demand. So I appreciate uh, our you, our followers, saying keep going. We did our first one back in uh, Thanksgiving, and uh, we did another one today. And I hope you'll enjoy it. We did it with uh, kitchen toke infused CBD out of Chicago, Illinois. Uh, the, the recipe today was a spike. Keep it going. Did you see that? A spicy nut, um, kitchen toke sweet and spicy nut mix, as well as a mocktail, uh, non-alcoholic, and but we're using the kitchen toke CBD infused honey. Uh, hope you enjoy it because it was delicious and uh, I enjoyed it as well as you can see. So I'm going to be picking these up off the off the counter here. But uh, uh, write your comments, questions. Uh, Thumbs up, like us, share us, and uh, subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Enjoy it. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. John Malanka with United Patients Group. Be informed and be well, and back by popular demand. So thank you. We did one in Thanksgiving, and people said, do it again. So this might be a, a regular thing, and I appreciate it. Um, today's special guest, Jolene Rivera. Hey, Jolene. Hi, how are you guys? Thanks for joining. And uh, Jolene is the owner. She's in Chicago, Illinois, and she is the owner of Kitchen Toke CBD infused honey. And we'll go into that, uh, the importance of honey and what's happening with the bees and how um, hemp CBD uh, is very beneficial to these honey, to these bees. And I know a recent study just came out, I think out of France that talked about what hemp is doing for the bee community. Because a lot of, I, I grew up overseas as well and a lot of the bees were dying off just in recent years and hemp is uh, producing pollen for the bees right. and uh in, during the off season and winter months where the other other uh plants aren't putting out the pollen of course hemp is there and, and uh it's it's passing it along so um welcome you want to add to that or is that just uh no, I actually read the same story. It was kind okay. of exciting because uh, uh, for people who don't know, uh, hemp and cannabis do not produce produce nectar, but they do. The male plants produce the pollen. So, there, there are uh, any plants who have access to the cannabis plant uh, and and access to that pollen. It's shown that the bees are fighting off pesticides easier, or at all, because we know that that's the biggest killer of bees, right? So yes, it is. And, that, and, was, yes. that was promising and exciting. So you're in the right place at the right time. And so, but how you got into this is because in honor of your grandfather, is that correct? Well, a little bit on the honey side, yes, in honor of my grandfather, but I, I started Kitchen Toke Media Company. So if mm -hmm. you go to kitchentoke.com, we produce video stories, original stories. We do original reporting. We're a fact-based uh, company, we report the facts as we know them, and we know those facts change as we do research. But we are, pro, uh, we are a media company um, uh, informing customers of how to cook with cannabis for health and wellness. And in doing that research, I read a story about uh, the founder of uh -huh. Beefy's Technology. He had developed a patented process on how he could introduce bees to eating hemp oil and what he patented and he calls his hemp nectar. And the bees eat this nectar and they put the cannabinoids because they don't have an endocannabinoid system, they're passing the cannabinoids through their body, they're breaking that oil down and they're depositing the cannabinoids in the honey for us. So we, uh, we basically just put it in a jar. There's no yeah. other ingredients. It's, it's the only CBD food I think right now in the world that's considered a single ingredient food. You know, and, and it is food. I'm glad you said that because I know when I was talking to you offline, you know, when my wife Corinne was ill, um, this this was food for us, you know, just to get some nutrition in her. And this is what the doctors recommended. And I know a lot of people say, oh, sugar and sweet. But, you know, when you're battling and she wasn't eating, you know, burgers and fries and hot fudge sundaes, but this was something for some nu nutrition. Um, and then with that study, too, that I saw, it was not only for... Um, uh, domestic bees, if you want to say domestic bees, but also the wild bees that were coming in and, and uh, benefiting from this as well. And so, so what are we doing today? I know I have, I have my, my nuts and butter and everything else here as well as the honey. And, and so you're calling it the kitchen toke sweet and spicy nuts mix. And this is for the holiday season. And so again, wanted to wish everybody a 
at Merry Christmas one, happy holiday. And, uh, you know, what a year to reflect on of what we've all been through. And uh, I don't know about you, but we've been through some social distancing out here in California, uh, being the hot spot is what they say. But, uh, you know, I don't know what, what the first country in the world. Yeah. You know, and so uh, anyway, but I'm excited. So what are we doing here? So I have yep. uh, half a cup of raw almonds, half a cup of raw cashews. Uh, we're going to be doing two tablespoons of unsalted butter. Yep. One tablespoon of water. Yep. Two teaspoons. Um, and I'm using the salt, but you, there's a great company, the Vulc, the Vulcan uh, Fire Salt. And what was the salt company? Because I'm going to check out that, that. You show me the link. And it's another company based in your backyard. Uh, it's right here in Chicago. I don't really have a lot to do with them, uh, except that I love going there. Yeah. Uh, it's called The Spice House, and it's thespicehouse.com. And they okay. make a fantastic um, spicy mix called uh, Vulcan's Fire Salt. I have this every day, not just in mixed nuts, but on my salads. Uh -huh. I love it. Well, checking out their site, I'm definitely going to order from them. And again, that is a the Spice House. It's not a cannabis company, um, but they if you take a look at their their line of, of spices, um, I think you and, and and reasonable. And it looks all you know it uh, was natural and 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 healthy as well. Um, so the the Vulcan uh, fire salt that you're talking about, and then two tablespoons of your kitchen toke uh, hemp infused uh, cbd infused honey hemp honey and so we'll put a link um for jolene's uh company on the on the site as well so what's the first step so we have preheat them in at 375 so i've done that yeah and we're going to get our a little medium saucepan going we're going to heat this up uh we're going to drop in the butter okay uh, probably on low uh just drop in your butter your water really simple so starting up that with, so you're going with the butter first? Um, what did I say? Yeah. So putting the butter in the saucepan. Yep. Butter and, low heat. and water. And then just... Um, and the water we're going to be doing um, one tablespoon of water, huh? Yep. And then just whisk in your seasoning. Um, for me, it's just the spice salt. And I missed that last part. I'm sorry. The, the seasoning salt. Uh, yep. You just whisk that in with your butter and water. And so I already have. Um, so what I'm using, I don't have the, the Vulcan salt, but I'm using. Um, chili powder. You could do Aleppo pepper. Okay. Do a little uh, sea salt. And so this is two teaspoons. Yep. So I'm going to do. <clears throat> So what, I, what I was telling you is uh, my grandpa passed away last March and he told me a story when he, I've always had my eye on honey because of him, but uh, he told me a story when he was a baby, he learned to crawl up the stairs. And when he got to the top, he was rewarded with a teaspoon of honey. So I think he'd be, um, he'd really love what we're doing right now. And what was your grandpa's name? Uh, his name was Jose Quino Rivera. Jose Quino Rivera. Yeah, uh, he God, God bless him, and uh, we're continuing on uh, in his honor here too. So yes. I'm a big, big, big fan of family. So thank you for sharing that story. Um, so next spot, <clears throat> heating me up that? at 375. Sorry, Jolene, what were you saying? I was going to say, uh, once you get that all um, sort of mixed together and whisked together, then you're going to add a couple of teaspoons of uh, kitchen toke honey. You want, to bring, you want to bring your heat really low because you want to make sure that that honey dissolves really nice and slow. You don't want to overheat it because then you'll remove all of the beautiful uh, floral and antibacterial and anti-inflammatory properties that come in natural honey. Okay. It can be heated up, but the, the natural properties in honey should never really reach over a hundred and maybe two degrees. And so you're saying two tablespoons of your kitchen toke honey, and I'm going to put that in the saucepan with the butter, correct. the salt, as well as the water. Correct. And, and this is low heat, turn, correct? You're going to turn your heat very low, maybe to a simmer. And I usually lift the pan up off the heat and kind of do a really light stir. Just until it's, 
you know, a little more viscous than what's in the jar. Okay. And then once you do that, you can turn off your heat because that happens really quickly, uh, depending on how cold your honey is. I always keep mine in a very warm spot. So it- uh, I, I've, been e I've been eating some of it already. So it's, it's pretty warm. <laughs> and, then, um, and then to be honest, it's really simple because then I, and I add the, the liquid slowly to your bowl of mixed nuts. Okay, so you, you've already got a step ahead. So I'm putting a one and a half cup of the raw, um, cashews, yes. one and a half cup of raw almonds. Yep. And I cheated. I did a cup of almonds instead of one and a half. I did a cup of almonds, a cup of cashews, and a cup of um, of uh, pecans, raw pecans. Okay. I it's three cups of nuts, so you can mix and match and do whatever. Okay. All right. So we have the raw nuts correct right now, and so am I getting what I put in the saucepan? Get what you put in the saucepan. Okay. And then I would do a slow drizzle. You may not even need all of it. Depends on how much you want. But I would do a slow drizzle. You really just want to make the, um, get the mixed nuts kind of okay. uh, damp. And then stir them around. Get all those spices. Uh, get your, your mixed nuts all coated with the, um, the ingredients. I'm going to add a little bit more. I don't know if you saw the, la the last show that I did. I I'm, uh, I'm a home chef, not a professional chef, but I lo love cooking. And, I'm not even uh, going to call myself a chef. I'm going to yeah. say okay. that I am a creative director turned into a home baker, maybe. Well, on this, chef, on this show, you can be called a chef, professional chef, Jolene Rivera. Okay. Uh, out of Chicago, Illinois. So what is your background? Because uh, I I've heard a few different things with your media company, what uh, you're carrying on the tradition of your grandfather and your passion for health and wellness. And, uh, you know, I'm, I, I am, uh, I consider myself a health advocate. You know, I, I, you know, we started United Patients Group um, because of, uh, we were kind of thrown into this with the illness of my father-in-law. He had stage four lung cancer metastasized to his brain and he was given weeks to live. And we knew nothing about the benefits of cannabis uh, except yeah, yeah. appetite stimulation. We came across a study that showed 40% of cancer patients pass with malnutrition before cancer takes over. And that's the only reason, and we lived in California. So that's the only reason why we went that route. And um, he's still alive today. So I've seen the benefits of this, of this plant. And so with that, there's a lot of times I wrap people away from um, cannabis, you know, being a health advocate. And so when you shared your passion about uh, health and wellness, I said, God, what a perfect match. And um, you know, I love these season seasonal nuts as well, and especially here during the holiday time. Well, yeah. And I, we talked about that a little and I'll tell our viewers, you know, we talked about doing some really cool, um, you know, cookies or brownies and, you know, whatever, you know, we traditionally make at the holidays. And, yeah. you know, uh, I think a lot of that's already going to go on. So I really am with, with um, COVID and flu and cold season and, um, you know, um, it's just, it is the season, I guess. So I just want to, I want to try to promote for everyone to still indulge in some yummy, good, spicy honey and yeah. all the things that bring us comfort, but, but also, you know, keeping that body inflammation down. So this is my creation before we put it in the oven. Does that look right? Looks right. I've got okay. mine. All right. And so did you add a little extra spices? Cause you can just kind of, kind of wing it. I didn't put any, any chili, chili uh, pepper. Did you add your chili peppers in yours? I didn't. I didn't. Uh, this I just went straight by the recipe that okay. we gave you, and um, um, it's got a little extra, you know, I guess sauce mixture in there. But I, I might sprinkle some more sauce. At, or I mean, some more. Um, I'm a big salt person. Okay. So I might do some more like straight sea salt when it comes out. Okay. Yeah. So, so we're putting this in for for ten minutes, correct? Yep, ten minutes. I'll set the timer. If I'm talking to you, I might miss it. <laughs> Okay, so I'll follow, I'll follow your timer. Okay. Uh, so, uh, what are we doing next? I know we're doing a mix of um, and a mocktail as well. That's correct. So I, because this honey is so anti-inflammatory and so uh -huh. healthy for you, I mean, you're talking about 
a functional food like honey by itself is already anti-inflammatory. And uh, you have a functional food like cannabis um, and all of the properties and the cannabinoids and CBD in there is anti-inflammatory. So when you have the B bringing these two functional foods together, it's the first time that nature's bringing two functional foods together. So I like to have it in its entirety, yeah. meaning not cooked and not heated, you know. So we're gonna, we're gonna make um, a uh, kitchen toke honey simple syrup. Okay. So we can then take that syrup and add it to cocktails or mocktails or drinks or whatever you want. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm following your lead here. And so, um, so you're, call, you're calling it a blood orange paper, do, paper doll. Um, well, we make the honey blood orange syrup first. Okay. And so, so what do you recommend here? You have three blood oranges, uh, the juice, uh, the juice zest of three blood oranges, which I have here. So I've already taken a head start with like you, where I've juiced three, uh, and I didn't go blood oranges. I did go with some oranges, if that's okay with you. Yeah, blood oranges will be really in season on uh, January one. So okay, those Jan fair. Well, I did go with the uh, Christmas holiday picture. Though, <laughs> if you're okay with that? I love it. Okay, so and then, my apron. You haven't you haven't commented on my apron yet. I. I don't, I didn't see that. I don't think. Nice. I want to show everybody the shorts that are under that apron. Yes. Yes. This is a family show. Yeah. So <laughs> I cheated a little bit because I wanted to make sure I could do this and talk to you at the same time. So I have, um, I have the juice of three blood oranges. I'm going to okay. use a strainer. Okay. Into, um, this saucepan. Is this, is this too small of a saucepan or would you like a bigger one? That's perfect. Okay. And so I'm putting, I'm pouring the, so this has already been strained of uh, the pulp and the seeds. Um, I am pouring. Because I did not do that. So I use a, just get a little uh, rubber, um, rubber made spatula. Yep. Kind of use your strainer and get all that yummy blood juice through. Okay. And so I'm, what's the next step here? Um, so I have the- You're gonna have two ounces of honey. Two ounces of honey as well. Yep, and one zest, uh, one um, zest of a, a blood orange. And two ounces, correct? Yep. And are we putting this back on the stove, I'm assuming? And you're going to do, again, you're going to do a really low heat. You don't want to cook it. You're really just getting that honey and the blood orange juice mixed together. Uh -huh. don't, you don't want to simmer. You don't want to boil. You just want to mix the two. On, on, a, on a low heat, correct? Yep. Super simple. And you can refrigerate this when you're all done. Uh -huh. Refrigerate it and keep it for up to two weeks. So you, you literally have a really nice way to sweeten a cocktail, have a little CBD, have a little natural sugar and all the healthy properties of honey in any drink that you want to make for the rest of the week. So at Kitchen Coke, um, what else do you do there? So I know. Uh, yeah, so yeah. How I, I'll tell you how I started. So I, I'm a graphic designer by trade. Uh -huh. So I spent my life um, basically graphic designer turned creative director, uh, working for magazines at Meredith Publishing, Better Homes and Gardens, Food Network, making cookbooks uh -huh. for Wiley Publishing, things like that. So um, you asked me how I got here. I think it was a journey of that my own health journey uh, when I discovered I had insulin resistance while I was training for a triathlon. Okay. And then um, my friend, my, my partner, my creative partner, Nellie Williams, her dad got cancer. And then I started paying attention to cannabis. So it was a really paying attention to the food industry. I was doing craft foods, food network, US foods, reporting on food trends, paying attention to what chefs were doing, talking to them about cooking with cannabis behind the scenes. Nobody was really out of the cannabis closet yet. Yeah. So just reporting on that and then putting it with my personal life. My friend's dad has cancer. This is heartbreaking to me. And then I'm trying to be healthy with my own health journey and look at, I, I was, um, when I was diagnosed with insulin resistance, my doctor said, I'm going to, I'm going to write you a food list instead of a prescription. 
Good. But I want you to turn to the cover and think about food as medicine instead of going to the medicine cabinet. So that was new to me. And that was in 2012, 2014. You know, so, um, 2017, I did a blood test and I'm someone like you that, you know, takes care of my health and uh, what I put in my body is really important. Mm -hmm. I got my blood, blood work. To my surprise, it said I was pre-diabetic. And I said, how am I pre-diabetic? I'm doing everything by the book the way you should be. Yeah. And, uh, and so um, same thing. Our, my doctor or our doctor is a naturopath. Mm -hmm. And so we went, you know, of food, exercise, which really wasn't too hard for me to change anything because that's what I was already doing. And then re, uh, took my blood test again and everything's back to normal. But it's scary because my dad was a diabetic, but a healthy diabetic, if you really can be a, di a healthy diabetic. And, and um, so it's, it's important to, to, on the outside, you look fantastic. On the inside, you know, I think it's important to see what's going on. And if you do have access um, to a naturopath, uh, I'm a fan of naturopathic medicine because the doctor will give you a blood test A through Z. Naturopath medicine will give you a blood test A through double Z. And yep. you can see exactly what, what, what's going on in your body. And so a lot of times when women call, and you asked earlier when we were on camera, you know, how do I sleep? And I'll, you, I'll have a spoonful of your, your honey this evening. Uh, but a lot of time women will call our office and say, I'm having issue with sleep, depression, anxiety, and I'd like cannabis. And I said, you know, the first thing I would do, and not to offend you, how old are you? And they'll share their age. And I said, Hormone. my advice is to see where your all your hormones are yep. and, and, and hit that. And you could be off. And that one little thing, you bring your body back to balance. Uh, I think cannabis is wonderful, but it could just be a Band-Aid. And so I think, you know, a wide variety of exercise, fresh air, working out, uh, what you put in your body and sleep is, is also very important. I just read it before, before I make a mistake. You did. I did do a zest of a full. Am I adding that into this right add now? In. Yep. Add that in and uh, stir up, stir up your honey. Don't let that get too hot. No, nope. it's on a very, very low. Mine's uh, all finished. I'm going to um, strain this into a cup because right here. I don't like to leave the zest in here, so I always run this right through a little strainer. You do, okay. Yeah. Okay. Just take a. You could do, you could strain it now, or you can leave it oh, in there. That's delicious. Yeah. You that's could leave delicious. it for a week or, you know, and let it get all. So where, where are you putting, are you just putting that in a container? I just put it in a cup right now. Okay. There, but um, I wanted to see how much I had. And then I can add it. I can just put this in a jar for for uh, keeping or something. And so, do you would you put this generally uh, back in the refrigerator for a couple weeks? Um. So you're going to use some of it now to make a cocktail. Okay. But yeah. So there, it fits right in here. So I have a little jar here. You can just put it in something like this. Okay. And keep it in the fridge like that. But you're using some right now, right? Yeah, I'm going to use a little bit because we're going to make a little drink, right? Okay. And I have just a wine glass. What, what, what do you recommend? I don't have a martini glass. Uh, I've got a little rocks glass here. Rocks glass, okay. Yeah. I can get a rocks glass. All right. I've got a little rocks glass with a little fancy cube. <clears throat> so if I wanted to leave the zest in... Um, is that okay? gonna, yeah, I would just put it somewhere where you're going to store it because we're going to make a drink and you're only going to need a couple of tablespoons of that anyway. Okay, so I'm going to uh, pour this concoction in. Yeah. Perfect. Taking everybody on a tour. From and I'm using you as my timer. How are we doing on the 10 minutes? Um, we've got 11 seconds left. Nice. Okay. Nice internal clock there. There you go. <laughs> You're good. Yeah. Um, we could probably check on those. We could probably shake them up. There you go. Um, mine are still pretty damp, so I'm going to flip these around and then I'm going to put them back in and let them get a little more brown. Okay. 
and you're just saying you stick around? See, you know how this works. We write the recipes, and this yeah. is the first time we're making them, and then yeah. we can fix them. <laughs> so you're actually getting to te do the test kitchen uh, with me, John. Well, that's, that's why we are home chefs, <laughs> and we're creative. So you're saying you're so you're just mixing it around and putting it back in this in the uh, oven for a bit lo longer. Yeah, I stirred them up, put them back in. I like them to be a little bit brown. Okay. And, um, yeah, that'll be good. So I know you're 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 also an athlete. I've been onto your Instagram page, and it looks like you take care of your health as well. So I applaud you for that. Um, uh, and you've done triathlons. I I've done one. Um, huh? I've done one. I uh, trained with uh, Jim Karras' company here in Chicago um, every uh, twice a week. Uh -huh. And then when I'm not training with them, I'll do a run. I'll do like a four or five mile run a couple of times a week. So cool. Cool, it's, cool, cool. Uh, it's, it's always been really important to me. And the more I discover, I'm ex I get excited, you know, whether it's chiropractic care. Um, I sit in an infrared sauna a couple of mm -hmm. times a week and just yeah. really sweat it out and get rid of that inflammation. Um, I do dry needling. Have you done that? Which one is it? Dry needling. Uh, what maybe, but what, what is that? Uh, it's the, it's when they, uh, put needles in your body. In like the, acupuncture or what? It's like acupuncture needles. They're the same needle, but they go all the way into the muscle. Okay. They cause, yeah. They cause the muscle to spasm and relax. Yeah. It also sends a signal to your body. Hey, foreign invader. So all the blood rushes over there. So I have, um, I have three herniated discs in my neck and a slap tear in my rotator cuff. So that came from a car accident in 2010. So um, I try to do uh, avoid surgery. I just yeah, good. even it if I need to do that. And so chiro care, dry needling, infrared, non-inflammatory foods, no sugar really. Uh, besides, no salt. Rid, get, not, not too much of the salt. I said, I knew you said you like the salt. I love, um, salt. I've got salt everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, I could live off of potato chips and pasta if my insulin resistance would let me. <laughs> That's the I've choice. not done the dry needling. I'm a big fan of acupuncture and chiropractic and massage, and I do have an infrared sauna as well. Um, and what about the treatment of bee stings for... Uh, uh, isn't that amazing? Yeah. And so there's... Uh, can you is talk that, about that? Is that is that something in your repertoire of? of uh, I haven't done that yet. Yeah. Uh, and I wouldn't avoid it. So yeah. when we're at the apiary that holds uh, my business partners, their apiary is in California. It's just okay. Santa Barbara, and the beehives are open when they're making this honey. The beehives are open. And so you have to wear a bee suit. I typically don't. I'm not afraid of the bees. They'll wow. land on me. I don't really care. It's fine. If you're calm and cool, they're pretty calm and cool. Uh, once, I'm not going to chance that, though. Really? Uh, once I had, I mean, I was taking pictures with my phone, and they were landing on my hands, and I was fine with it. Nothing happened. Uh -huh. but, uh, when, but, you know, they, they kind of tease me. My partners are from Israel, and they tease me, and they say, hey, if a bee stings, it's good for you. Cause your body will get the venom and you know, you'll, you'll be able to fight that off and, you know, well, develop I, have, I haven't done the bee treatment either. So I'm allergic and I love honey, but I'm allergic to bee pollen. I start itching. Oh, really? So, um, I know it's a, you know, honey, I can eat honey all day long and not have any issues. Um, do you ever run into uh, any customers that have, uh, uh, that are allergic to anything, any byproduct of, of honeys, of, of bees? Well, we do have a bee balm. So the um, when the bee, honey's being made, the uh, the combs are uncapped by hand. So all of the wax that comes from there is a byproduct. That beeswax is also infused with cannabinoids. The bees are infusing their wax and the honey. So the, uh, that wax is then made into a balm. So we do have a bee balm, and I have had a few people put it on and say, "Oh, it made like it made my cut more red," you know, gotcha. but nothing, nothing major. Yeah. Uh, and in that bee balm, is there also CBD in there as well? There is because the bees are putting it in the beeswax for us. So, gotcha. you know, they're also when the bees are processing that hemp in their bee belly, they're breaking it down. So they're also making our honey, uh, the CBD in our honey the first naturally water soluble CBD, I think, and I think I can say anywhere in the world. I mean, unless you guys, unless somebody can point me to a bee or anywhere else that's breaking down hemp oil for us naturally. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's you were, not- you were, just, um, you were just awarded, your company was just awarded a, a pretty uh, 
a significant seal, right? And that was, and it was from what, what was the company? It was a wine food, and food and food wine. Food? food and wine. Food and wine. Excuse yes. me. Congratulations on that. And can you share with our viewers what what that means? I'm I'm I had to stop doing cartwheels for this event today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not even kidding. We've been we've been. I've been cheersing all day and high-fiving uh, for the last three days. But on Friday, Food & Wine uh, announced that Kitchen Toe Hemp Honey uh, made their 2020 uh, pick list. Fantastic. So, yeah, they're choosing us as one of the foods of 2020, which is really exciting since we just launched about 120 days ago. Yeah. So something good came out of 2020 then, huh? Yeah, they called our CBD the real deal. The real deal. The real um, deal. While while I'm getting the nuts out of out of the okay. oven, um, do you want to share what the name how to what what the name of your website is? I know we've said it a few times, but how they can find you? Yeah, so you can go to kitchentoke.com and you'll find um, original report <coughs> cannabis stories, health stories. You'll find recipes and how to videos. If you want to learn how to make your own can of butter, you can go to kitchentoke.com and do a step by step there. And you also can visit our um, kitchentokehoney.com website from there. Uh, just click on honey and it will take you right to um, our kitchen soap honey that we're cooking with today. And uh, I, you'll be did, you get your, did you get your nuts out of the oven yet? Not yet, but I will. You might because my, 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 mine got a little little toasty there. Today? Yeah. Uh, I just turned my heat off a few minutes ago, but they're okay. Uh, okay. I wanted to show you, this is the brand new cover coming out in January. This is our brand new issue. So we, we produce a uh, full 100 page uh, cover. Um, or magazine every oh, okay. yeah. yeah this is on shelf version this is the first time that we've split it so look at this issue and on shelves here yeah. we do have 25,000 print run and 2,500 stores in the United States we were in six countries before the pandemic yeah but uh, there's information on here on health and wellness cookbook reviews uh, it's loaded with recipes. It's probably got 20 different of our, what we call our OG chefs from over the last four years. Yep. And uh, it's got a really amazing water uh, story. Um, cannabis hydrosols, the water that comes from cannabis is basically a byproduct right now, but it's really amazing. So when, you say, when you say the water that comes from cannabis, meaning is it juicing or what, what, what do you? When the cannabis plant is cultivated, there's... Yep. You know, there's natural water in all plants, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So cannabis hydrosol is basically listed by the FDA as a byproduct. It's hard to get right now, but it's coming. Uh -huh. And we'll be able to get our hands on some of this water to cook with. So like we added water today to our simple yeah. syrup, it would be, yeah. you can't get high from cannabis hydrosols, but it's loaded with terpenes and it's really good for you. So it'd be really nice to just drink a glass of cannabis hydrosols. It might be a little bit bitter, but if you add a little honey to it, it's a really great drink. Well, we have our mixture that we can, a little syrup that we can add, add, add to it as well then, huh? Yes. So um, let's see. So we can uh, make a drink. So you, oh, first so of all. You're, you're not out of, their, out of their oven, right? Yeah, they're out, they're good. You could still, I'm telling you, I think mine could still use a little. Really? Yeah. My three, my 375 in the next few minutes, I, I, a couple of them got, got a little toasty. So the, the holiday toast, toasty nuts, just like your uh, recipe calls for. So let's go with the, um, let's go with the, uh, your mocktail. Okay. Um, so we did the, uh, the juice. So now you're gonna, what you're gonna do is add one and a half ounces of fresh, new fresh blood orange juice or orange juice. Okay. And then you're gonna also do an ounce of fresh squeezed lemon. Okay, and so um, I'm gonna make another, another. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna juice another um, okay. ounce and a half of, of oranges as well as lemons. So yep. I'll let you do that and I'll be over here doing mine. So do you cook for for friends and family out there? Are you originally from Chicago or where are you from? I'm actually from Des Moines, Iowa. My grandfather is, I'm fifth generation. My, okay. my grandparents are from Guadalajara, Mexico. Um, wow. You know what's so funny? I was just sharing my friend Enrique Lopez, who I've known, I am 53 now and he's probably 43, but I've known him since he was 17. And he came to Santa Barbara. So I, you know, I have family in Santa Barbara. And when I was in college there, of the restaurant business. 
and uh, he'll love this. This was this is just this. I brought this as a gift actually. Awesome. And Enrique came from Guadalajara and spoke zero English, and he started off as in, in the in the uh, uh, back of the kitchen doing dishwashing, and he made his way up from dishwasher to sous chef to busboy manager, and then he went and started working uh, at Santa Barbara Volkswagen. He went down to Ventura, did the same thing, became a manager. Bought a home. His kids went to, you know, out of college. And then just the last couple of years, he and his wife um, opened up a bed and breakfast down in um, in Sonata, Mexico. And it was a glamping uh, bed and breakfast. And he was jam packed seven days a week. And I said, is it only uh, the Mexican community coming? He goes, John, we got Americans, we got Europeans, the trip advisor, five star trip advisor. And so over the years, I mean, he's been like my little brother you know, my whole life. And so he reached out to about seven of us. He goes, you guys have always supported me on everything that I've always done. One of the things he loves is, is wine. He's grown wine. He goes, I need help with, uh, to, to, to for some money for to bottling some wine. I said, count yeah. me in. Yeah. So last year, not only, so his company is called Casa Misiones, it's in, from uh, Mexico. Oh, it's, uh-huh. it's a 20, 2017 Malbec. I didn't realize this. So about seven months ago, I brought one of these bottles, and I have a handful of cases. And uh, my, I, I brought this as a gift. And then he, my friend said, "Do you know your names on the back of it?" And I said, "I never, I never knew that." Right? That's so nice. Special thanks. And he has a handful of his friends, and he has John Malanca on there. So when you said Guadalajara, this is. Total, total fluke. But oh, anyway, yeah. shout out to Mexico, Guadalajara, Casa Misiones, as well as uh, Enrique Lopez. So I, I love you, brother. And uh, great wine. Wine makers are some of my favorite, you know, my favorite people, I think. You know, yeah. um, I've been reporting on the restaurant industry for over 10 years. So yeah. I've, I, in uh, 2017, I flew 130,000 miles. We went to Thailand to report on a chef there who's opening a restaurant in New York. We were in Puerto Rico with Jose Enrique. Uh, we were, um, I mean, California, like multiple times, you know, I mean, we're from Minneapolis to, 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 I don't know, where were we? Texas. We were in Cuba, you know? So, you know, when we, I mean, I miss travel right now, but we'll, it'll be back soon enough. I'm going to enjoy this downtime. I'm right enjoying now. it because I was like you, I was constantly on planes and I've been on constantly on planes because I, my background was uh, publications. I worked for magazine, travel magazines oh, and yeah. websites. Yeah. And so you pulling out your, your kitchen taupe magazines, that was my life. But I was, you remember the Southwest airline commercial where the guy's like, thank you, Detroit. We love you. And he says, we're not in Detroit. And the, 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 yeah, their yeah, yeah. was got to yeah. get away. That's how I was. I'd wake up thinking, where am I? Where am I? <laughs> so I'm enjoying this downtime of doing things at home during COVID. I cook every meal. I think I had, I've had one lunch out. Um, but I've, I've cooked and I love cooking. And so um, there's something I'd like to add to the little repertoire of, uh, of what we do here at United Patients Group. So I'm going to um, be honest. I think I'm quarantining wrong for sure. I mean, yes, I'm enjoying being home and my dogs love it, but I've been working. We just launched the food company. Yeah. So launching that from here has been really challenging. I mean, I just had one ton of honey lost in FedEx Freight right now. Well, so, your, your honey was lost for 24 hours over here and it went to our neighbor's house. So I did yeah, it. So hopefully yeah. you, you can find that. Uh, it's 1800 pounds. So I'm pretty sure we'll find it somewhere. <laughs> Maybe in the back of someone's truck, trunk in, in, in Chicago there, huh? So I'm going to juice the blood oranges again for, for this, this uh, uh, next portion here. Right. So give me a second. So you can do it by hand or you can do it this way, whichever you prefer. Oh, look at you. Uh, you know, I prefer. I told you, I'm a, I'm a wannabe home chef. I prefer, this is really simple. Yep. They're really inexpensive to get. They work really well. And I don't have this huge, I have a smaller kitchen, so I don't have this huge gadget to store. Okay, uh, so we have the blood oranges as well as the lemon. Woo! Those nuts have some kick. And what's that? It has a kick? That Vulcan salt. It's um, 
It's spicy, but um, I think okay. my grandmother would love it. <clears throat> so what do you, uh, what's the next stop then? All right, so after you juice that, you're gonna um, do uh, one and a half ounces of fresh blood or, or orange juice. You're gonna do your lemon juice. And then you're gonna um, add one ounce of our, our new uh, hemp honey uh, mixture. Okay. So, so one ounce of that, right? One ounce. And I'm adding this in a shaker. Okay. Well, I'm not, I'm, I'm just going to put it in, in, in the actual glass. And okay. is this actually for one serving this one ounce or is it? Yep. It's one drink. Okay. And then you're going to do a little dash of, uh, the bitter. Bitters. Yep. It's scrappy, scrappy's bitters. Yep. And then you're going to do two ounces of seltzer water. You can use um, LaCroix, you can do Pellegrino. And if you really want a little crunch to it, you could try Pepo Chico, which is one of my favorites. I went with Trader Joe's special, if that's OK with you. That too. <laughs> and then you're going to shake that up. And so I, I'm, I have not added the, um, The other so okay so actually boom and then we're gonna shake that up. Have you put in the ice your ice in there yet or not? Nope, I've got um, I've got a little round cube here. Yep. So once I make that, I'm gonna pour it over the cube. So I'm doing mine backwards. I'm doing everything little, in the same same glass. Yeah, I'm gonna add a little blood orange uh, floaty on the top. And I just, it's crazy because I'm in Chicago, guys, and um, the winter's been mild enough where my fresh lavender plants are still intact. So I just went and cut a little sprig, and then there you have it. And are you adding any extra honey, or is it what we've done so far is good? I just used, uh, I used the simple syrup we made. Okay, yep. So the sugar is pretty low. And then this is our blood orange paper doll. I'll toast you. Cheers. Cheers. It's really nice. It's not too sweet. It feels not like too sweet at all. Actually, well done. And so where'd you come up with this recipe? Is this something that you've had in your family? Is it something you've made up or something that you had in your in the in the uh, publication? Well, I'll be honest, I have ideas all day, and because I'm not a chef and I'm not a cook, I have a team of people who develop stuff. So a story would be, um, I read a story about how collagen helps muscle recovery. And I wanted to do a vegan snack with collagen and um, what else was in there? And CBD, of course. Huh? And so I write down all the ingredients that I think I want in something and I give it to my recipe developers and they, they work it out for me. So that recipe actually just went on our Instagram the other day. Uh -huh. uh, it's called uh, collagen peptide uh, bites, I think. Yeah. I, I put collagen, I take collagen, uh, powdered collagen um, every day I put in, in, in uh, a smoothie. And you, do you do, I've heard, I've heard two things. I've heard, yeah, I've taken that. that and I use uh, uh, another company, um, which I use all their supplements and this is not. This cool. is my favorite vegan uh -huh. Sun Warrior uh, vanilla protein. I can drink this just straight with water if I'm yeah. in a hurry. Yeah. So I have one of these every day. Sometimes I just use a shaker, drink it straight, and I got to go. I'm, I'm running around. So uh, you do it in the daytime? Because I've, I've heard mixed reviews of taking it night before bed, and I've heard taking it in, in the daytime as well. Have you, have you run into that at all? It's my first meal of the day. No, okay. I don't do it at night. So um, I usually work out in the morning, yeah. and then I wait until I'm a coffee drinker. So I'll wait until about 11, 12, and then I'll, I'll have my first meal today. I'm not a breakfast person. I don't force myself to eat. Breakfast doesn't even sound good to me. So but coffee does. five miles, you know, just, coffee, the breakfast of champions. Yeah. Um, so are, like, you ahead, are you a step ahead of me? Or are we done with the, with the nuts over here? We're done with the nuts. Um, I was so going to eat a little sea salt, but they're really, um, that Vulcan salt, it's like, um, it's like adding a little red chili pepper. I'll tell you, 
there is, <clears throat> it's going to make me cough a little bit. There's chili paste in this Vulcan salt. From okay. the, so it's a salt, garlic, chili paste, um, shallots, lime juice powder. So all of this makes up this uh, Vulcan, this Vulcan salt. <clears throat> so it has some kick to it. And the combination of this touch of citrus sweetness with the nuts is kind of fantastic. Well, I'm going to, for the power of the internet and, and, and TV, or uh, the, the, the um, so this is the mixed nuts, and you can give them as gifts, delicious. Yep. yep. You can give them. Uh, a little bit of mixed nuts, a jar of honey, a magazine. I have all the gifts for all of you over here. <laughs> I need to order one of your aprons. Didn't you have one of the aprons that, that's from a company in San Francisco? Uh, it's actually a tea towel. So we just we just came out with our um, these really nice canvas totes. Cool. I think the world could use a little uh, be kind. Yeah. And it's got hemp, hemp honey on the back, but these are tea towels and they were produced by my friend Christina at Studio Petro, but you can see how big they are. Yep. And I did, I held them up because I wanted people to see just how you big actually, they You have are. to back up, back up. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And so yeah. is that, is that a, um, it's just a full, uh, tea. I mean, it's, it's pretty big. You can tell, okay. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a size small, but you can, it's still a pretty big tea towel. I mean, when you compare it to, um, I guess the size proportion of a, you know, a half sheet tray. Yeah. It would, it would more I got than, you. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, these are beautiful. They're stain resistant. Um, I can show you what it looks like after using it for a year. So, but, uh, yeah, these are beautiful. So she, these are, you can get at kitchentoke.com. In our shop at kitchentoke.shop. Yep. Um, so they're available too. It's and so will you what 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 is your what is your 2021 look like? I know congratulations one on receiving your uh, new certification um, or the seal, I should say. Uh, you have a kitchen kitchen toke shop that sells the honey. Um, you have the bomb that you're talking about. Yeah. And um, your, I guess, the makeshift apron and the publication, and are you going to be expanding uh, into other areas in the CBD market? Well, we're working on a podcast right now. Uh, cool. I'll be honest with you, we have a very small team, so that takes some time. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we'd like to have you on, John. I think I'd be honored. Thank you. A lot of health things to talk about. I think it would be yeah. fun. Actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, um, we're, we'll probably come out with some new product next year and we're looking to get back to events. You know, we did four dinners at Fashion Week uh, for um, a, pro a problem wrong, a fashion designer there. We, he partnered with Bloomingdale's. So we did a full infused dinner for Bloomingdale's and his, his brand. Yeah. Uh, we've done backstage concerts. So we'll probably hopefully look to get back into outdoor events maybe. And yeah. maybe we, uh, we were supposed to launch the honey actually at the Aspen classic at the Aspen Food and Wine Fest. So that got canceled. Hopefully next year we'll be there. It's, um, I'm liking, I'm enjoying seeing the stigma of this plant uh, starting to drop, you know. Um, even when we, when we uh, entered this industry back in 2010, the stigma was there. And it's still there in, in a lot of areas. And, uh, but seeing what CBD has done as just one of the cannabinoids or about 140 different cannabinoids. I'm a big fan of terpenes as well, but because of what the benefits of CBD and taking that stigma down of the, uh, the high effect that a lot of people uh, contribute to or, or think what cannabis is all about. Um, there's some great health benefits. Um, yeah. Even <laughs> you're talking about the benefits of a bee sting, even with bee stings and mosquito bites, you can put CBD oil on there. And it helps, it helps uh, stop in the itching and the pain and as well as the healing as well. So I, I have like people it. putting our honey on their face. So that's, I mean. Face, for face cream, that's your, that's your new thing, the C CBD face cream. Hey, if it helps. I use it, can't you tell? Hey, anything <laughs> I, that works. I do, I, I do. Anything that works. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, so, um, but. Uh, well, yeah. good, Julian. Um, 
I appreciate your time. I appreciate you taking you. taking some time out for our for our our community uh, and sharing your passion uh, with me as well as our community as well and this delicious recipe and love to do something again in the new year. Um, hopefully this this takes off like it's you know this is uh, my, my second show and um, you know the feedback we had on the first show uh, for the Thanksgiving show um, was hey keep keep going and so uh, that's pretty and, great that's fun. Yeah. And we're just switch switching it up a bit. But uh, I thank you. I wish you and your family uh, a happy holiday, Merry Christmas and, and health. And, uh, thank you and, so much. and God bless your, your grandfather, too. You know, uh, uh, you know, I love carrying on. Uh, our loved ones are no longer and here. My memories, I feel like yeah. through me. Yeah. 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 I'm so. great but I feel like he'd be really proud of me. So that keeps me going. And that's the thing that I focus on the most. You know, it, I look at it, um, you know, my father passed, God, my father passed, it'll be 12 years this Christmas Eve. And so, um, uh, and then Corinne is going to be three, it's three years right now. But I, I look at when your loved ones that pass, um, it kind of make you a better person in a way because you know, and I don't know what your beliefs are, uh, but I feel like they're around watching and they kind of on your, over your shoulder. Like my dad's, my dad, even when my dad was here with uh, my brother and I, he'd always share with us, think before you act, think before you act. And that saved me a lot. <laughs> I didn't always do it, but it saved me a lot growing up in life. And so, uh, you know, I feel like I'm a better person carrying on, on their, their uh, uh, tradition as well. And I, you were going to say something, sorry. There's so many people I think who aren't as fortunate even as us, you know, I got to tell my grandfather everything I wanted to say to him. And I mean, everything I needed to say, I wanted to say, I wanted him to know how much I loved him. And right now with COVID, I think there's so many people who are losing their loved ones without being able to be with them. And my heart, I know how much I'm hurting just at the loss of my grandfather last year. I can't even imagine and my heart goes out to all of them. And I think that's why, you know, I think that's why I'm really set on, you know, uh, anything that you can do for yourself yeah. and your loved ones to take care of your health. Because I think that, that with the pandemic, we've learned no one's going to take care of us, not the government, not the healthcare system. The only people we can trust is ourselves. Yeah. And, and, and if you don't take care of you, no one else will. And nothing matters more than your health. If you have your health, you have everything. And um, it's when you don't have your health, then you know you're you're in a state where you do anything to have a back. Totally. And I just tell people just start start small. Get a good night's sleep. It's the cheapest, best thing that you can do for yourself. Just start to get a good night's sleep and drink some you know, water. And, and, and same thing. You know, I tell people is don't take health for granted. You can have. The, as much money as you have out there, we saw what happened with Steve Jobs, you know, uh, also another pancreatic cancer, uh, uh, someone who lost his life to pancreatic cancer. And the amount of money, you, you, you know, health is so important. You cannot get that back. And I share, you know, what you put in your body is really important, but getting out and movement, you know, even if it's this all you can do, I always say do that. But if you can take a, uh, you know, walk around the block, making your way up to your 5K, in your triathlons and stuff like that is is uh, you know the way I the way I, I, I live my life and um, hopefully that's uh, something I can spread and share as well. But uh, Jolene, I thank you so much for taking your uh, time out of your day to be with us today, and congratulations, um, Jolene Rivera, out of Chicago, Illinois, Kitchen Toke Infused Honey. Take a look at her website and the publication, everything else that she's doing, uh, Kitchen Toke. Dot com, correct? That's correct. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you soon. And uh, we'll let's do another one of these. Okay, let's do it. Next time I swear I'll make some something more complicated. <laughs> this is delicious. All right. Thank, thank you again. And Bye. thank you, everybody, uh, and all of our followers. This is John Malanka with the United Patients Group. Be informed and be well. And happy holidays. Merry Christmas to all. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Hi, John Malanka here with the United Patients Group. I hope you've enjoyed our videos. Please click like as well as subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Also, follow us on Twitter at UPatientsGroup 
and on Facebook at United Patients Group, as well as for our podcast. Please click the link in the description below. We'll see you there. Bye-bye.